This is an Advantech UTC 315 touch computer. Uh, it doesn't boot up. Advantech recommends that you reset the BIOS in order to reset its ability to boot. So what we've got is a number one Phillips screwdriver and a little magnet just to hold on to the screws. Um, first thing you need to do, make sure you don't have any little dongles on there like that that could block plastic from being removed. There is an outside bezel that needs to be removed that just pulls straight off. There are a series of screws. Most of them are about like 16 millimeter in length. This one right here in the middle is much shorter. It's only maybe five millimeter. So we can get that guy out of there. Show you the difference. Most of the screws inside are going to be that size. The guy's going over here and he's going to sit on a magnet so we don't lose them. Well, if I do lose them, I'll lose all of them all at once, which, you know, that'll just be a bad day. Just chalk that up to a bad day when you lose them all. This feels like a good time for a montage. A disassembly montage. All the screws are removed and the back cover lifts off to reveal some more shielding. Okay, I went ahead and removed the screws just to show where they are. You got one here, you got one here, here and here, and then one here and one here. That allows this metal shielding, which also contains the Visa connectors, the monitor connectors, to be removed. And now we can see the motherboard. So we've got the battery that has to be disconnected in order to reset the bias. That's a matter of in that little white tab up. So it's removed. Oh, we got here. Jumper 3. Jumper 3 is supposed to be the one that allows the CMOS to discharge. The correct jumper position for jumper number three is for two and three to be connected. And the reset position is for three and four to be connected. That's a reset position. A few seconds. And then we go back to two and three. That is the correct position for jumper three. Now, plug the battery back in. Come on, battery. It's plugged back in. And now I can put it back together. So we're gonna put the shielding back on. Make sure that clears those wires for the little speaker. Make sure that the conductive uh, foam material is in contact. These pieces are behind this metal plate. And these screw positions are going to align correctly. Let me get the screws in there. So yeah, switch to a number two for these guys. It just gets a little bit more of a bite, less likely to strip these little ones out. Okay, so the two in the plate are in, two on the side, 
are in and the two at the top are also in. I pinch in any wires up here. Good idea. I bring them back down. Don't force them or anything. Just make sure you got a decent gap there for the plastic. And then it's a matter of putting these longer screws back in to the outside plastic and the one little one one little screw goes right there so I've got all the screws in and just a recommendation these longer screws on the outside edge probably gonna need a number one Phillips for the little stubby screws they seem to work better with a number two Phillips it's just going to be easier if you have both screwdrivers plastic bezel just goes right back on just press it down it snaps in place okay 12 volt power let's see if if I can hold this camera in a way that shows us if the light lights up when I plug in this 12 volts. There we go. That's good because that wouldn't happen before. We wouldn't get a light. And just heard the beeps. Which means it's probably powering up on the other side. Yep, it is. Let's switch over to the wide view here. There we go. Warning, check some error. Press F1 to skip, delete, or escape to set up. Uh, you know what? Don't have a keyboard. Can't press any of those buttons. Now I need a keyboard. Yep, just grabbed a keyboard. And we're going to try... Probably just hit an escape. Let's see. Press F1 to skip. We're going to hit F1. Sure enough, it's booting Windows. That's what we want to see.